A new report from Pro Football Network is suggesting the Arizona Cardinals are privately telling people that Kyler Murray is not expected to play this season. They also just shipped out former first-round pick Isaiah Simmons to the New York Giants this week. With these two happenings in Arizona, is there any mystery to what the Cardinals' intentions are regarding the 2023 regular season? Kyle, what are you thinking? No. No, there are not. They are really, really bad. Um, It's not just trading away Isaiah Simmons, the former number eight pick in the NFL draft, which, by the way, this isn't even the first time this has happened to the Cardinals, where they can't figure out a position for a high first round draft pick. And so they kind of just wander in the desert, metaphorically and literally, for three years. Then they jettison them off and then they turn into a star. This is Hassan Reddick all over again, okay? This is exactly what happened to Hassan Reddick. Exactly word for word is what's happening to Isaiah Simmons. They shipped him out for nothing at the end. It's not just that. Within one day, they traded Isaiah Simmons and Josh Jones, who was their highest PFF graded offensive tackle last year, traded both of them in exchange for Josh Dobbs and a seventh round pick, which is just awful. Just absolutely objectively awful. Then we can go to the fact that the Cardinals are currently paying their general manager the 31st out of 32 salaries in the league this year. They're paying their head coach, Jonathan Gannon, 32nd out of 32 teams at the head coaching position and salary. They are not investing in the team because they owe Cliff Kingsbury $30 million over the next six years. They've raised ticket prices over the past couple of years to make up for their losses. The Cardinals are absolutely tanking absolutely tanking and it's incredible to watch happen in real time it is incredible to watch a team that two years ago started the season eight no and made the playoffs and was one detroit lions upset away from winning the nfl against the san francisco 49ers and super bowl champion los angeles rams like they were that good two years ago and then it just all fell apart and now they're actively deciding to tear the team to the ground it's remarkable to watch happen in real time, but they make no mistake about it. Yeah, they are tanking. They are not invested in winning this season. I know Kyler Murray wants to get back before the season is over, but if you'll remember, Kyler Murray tore his knee in November of last year. Maybe it was early December was the, the game against the Patriots, and he didn't have surgery until about January 3rd. So just because he got hurt in December doesn't necessarily mean the rehab timeline will line up with when he got injured. He delayed surgery by about four weeks while they were evaluating their options. And so he got surgery in January. The earliest he's expected to be back is sometime in November. And if the Cardinals just shut it down and say, we're going to protect our player, It's probably not going to go the right way with Kyler Murray, but at that point, are the Cardinals even invested in Kyler Murray's long-term success because are actively taking and will actively have a chance at a quarterback at the top of the draft? Okay, so they have a chance at quarterback at the top of the draft. That quarterback that they seem to be angling towards would be USC quarterback Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams, of course, he's the favorite to win Heisman this year. He's projected to do big things for the Trojans and potentially even get that team back to a college football playoff. But Zach, you mentioned this a little bit off podcast. We're talking about just the willingness of the Cardinals to move off their top 10 drafted quarterbacks. We saw this before with Josh Rosen. Now that it's happening at Kyler Murray, what do you think the chances are for success for Caleb Williams if he does land in the desert? Well, I mean, just how this franchise is uh, projecting to be and its trajectory from the last couple, you know, I would say winning season two years ago. And then obviously last year was a disaster. But if they don't do anything to support Caleb Williams, then he's going to end up exactly like every other quarterback that has stepped inside that that quarterback room in Arizona. And that is bad. You know, Kyler has the tools to be a good NFL quarterback. You know, his issue is is health. Before that, Josh Rosen, he didn't have the tools to be a good quarterback, you know, so they've, they're, they're going to be moving on from these quarterbacks for different reasons. I don't necessarily know that Caleb Williams is going to be able to save that franchise if they don't do anything else to bolster their roster before they draft him. Do you think their head coach there is basically being set up to fail as well? Like, do you think oh, that sure. Gannon even has a chance like of taking this franchise into the future? I mean, I think he's going to attempt to try some semblance of coaching, but I think obviously I feel like it's obvious to all of us who you know watch football that they are actively tanking. So do I think he has a chance? No. <laughs> 
So the future of Kyler Murray is one that's in limbo as well, based on all this. Like we know that if they are going to be as bad as they're going to be, then they are going to get a quarterback at the top of the draft regardless. Now, if they miss on Caleb Williams, like let's say they fall into the Drake May tier, and there's a lot of people that even think that Drake May might be as good, if not better, than Caleb Williams in the long term. Do you think that they still should move off of Kyler Murray? If th- that does happen, do you think that Drake May is an equal replacement? I don't even know if I would move off of Kyler Murray for Caleb Williams. I'm not 100% sure about that one either, because similar to what Zach said, you have to build a support system around the quarterback. And yes, people view Caleb Williams as this long-term successful quarterback prospect and prodigy, the best quarterback prospect since Trevor Lawrence, you've heard people say. And that was only three years ago, so we're not talking about that long of a timeline. But Kyler Murray got that $200 million extension for a reason. Kyler Murray has made two Pro Bowls. And I know you could say the Pro Bowl doesn't matter and it's the NFC and whatever. He was top 10 in QBR in his second season and his third season in the NFL. For the first eight games of that 2021 season, he was a legitimate MVP candidate when the Cardinals were winning all those games and taking on the Packers, who eventually had the number one seed in the NFC that year. They took the Packers down to the last minute of a Thursday night game where AJ Green forgot to turn around on a passing route. It got intercepted. So Kyler Murray is that dude. Like Kyler Murray got that contract for a reason. I'm shocked that the Cardinals organization and Cardinals fans like actively hate Kyler Murray. It's been one of the most shocking revelations to see. And part of it is the immaturity. Him and Cliff Kingsbury weren't talking the last 10 weeks of the season. There's obviously the injury concerns. He has not finished a season During his four years with the Arizona Cardinals, he probably won't again this year, gauging on how the Cardinals view him at this point. So beyond the injuries, beyond the immaturity, the organization just seems kind of sick of him, but they're also committed to each other because they know like Kyler Murray is a really, really good quarterback. I don't think he has the ceiling anymore of potentially a top five quarterback in the NFL, but all the physical gifts are there for Kyler Murray. Like they're well, not it's all hard of them. for me. To, we know there's a few inches missing from the vertical, all the necessary physical gifts to be a 10 year, 12 year starting quarterback in the NFL and to get his number in the ring of honor in Arizona. All of those physical gifts are there. I understand Caleb Williams is really good. He might be the first two time Heisman trophy winner since Archie Griffin. Like he, is that dude all the physical gifts are there I I could defend it either way I could defend the keeping Kyler Murray because you've committed to him and you've seen the sample size on him and I could understand the moving on from him for Caleb Williams when it comes to if I'm not comfortable 100% saying Caleb Williams over Kyler Murray I'm definitely not 100% on Drake May or any of the other quarterbacks in this year's draft class. I don't think Klupnik for Clemson is eligible this year, but I wouldn't be 100% sure on either of those guys, especially when there's so many really good players at the top of the draft this year at other positions. Well, I I think like an indicator of more or less how good Caleb Williams is, is we've heard the Patrick Mahomes comparison thrown out there. And that's not just getting thrown out there by anybody. That's actually getting thrown out there by like Nick Wright, for example, which we know how much he loves Patrick Mahomes. I know, Kyle, you're a big time Patrick Mahomes yourself. So to hear like that praise getting thrown out there for Caleb Williams, a guy who hasn't even taken an NFL snap yet, won't for another year, is not something that you tend to just turn your head at and look away. I, I think that there is something to the prospect coming in in Caleb Williams. But again, going back to what we talked about earlier, just like the support system has to be there. And whether it's Jonathan Gannon at the head coaching position or someone else moving forward, I have to believe in the head coach. Uh, Gannon, heck, he was getting ripped apart for his decision making in the Super Bowl, which ultimately led to that Chiefs comeback against the Philadelphia Eagles. So he's not even necessarily a defensive mastermind. Defensive head coaches, we know, tend not to last when it comes to bringing in a rookie quarterback. So I think that that might be spelling his death sentence right there as far as the Arizona Cardinals head coaching spot. So it sounds like the Cardinals are going to be paying out more money to a coach that's no longer coaching for them when it comes to Gannon, probably in the long run. So who is going to be that guy that they bring in? You mentioned too, Kyle, that you think that uh, another popular pairing that's getting thrown around on Cardinals Twitter is Marvin Harrison Jr. also being a pick by the Cardinals because they actually do have what might end up being two top five selections If the Houston Texans end up just as bad as the Cardinals are, you get Marvin Harrison Jr. and you get Caleb Williams. That's a good building block, but there's so much more to be done to get this roster going in the direction that they want. Not to mention 
if San Francisco continues to be good, if Seattle continues to trend upward, you have a division that's improving around you. Uh, there's a lot working against the Cardinals, not limited to just in general, the bad management that tends to fall around this franchise. The fact that, yeah, they're making their players pay for dinner. An NFL version of the Oakland A's from Moneyball, essentially. That's what we're seeing this franchise operate at. They're one of the most low-level franchises in the NFL, perhaps in NFL history as far as how they tend to run their organization. So Caleb, whoever, Drake May, Kyler, they're not walking into a great thing. But I think another indicator of how much the Cardinals think of Kyler Murray, we can't forget the infamous clause in his contract when it came to film studying. So I do wonder who is that team that wants to bet on Kyler Murray moving forward is too, because even beyond Arizona, how many teams do we think are going to be trying to buy for his services after Arizona ultimately decides to move on? Because actually the Cardinals, they're probably going to get a first round pick back, right? What was compensation for Kyler Murray coming off ACL tear and not playing a year? What, what, is that question for you when you think about Kyler Murray? Well, so I can answer the question for you on what teams would be interested when there was that like three months period where like Kyler was beefing with the organization and they hadn't given him the extension yet. That the extension kind of came in July. Kyler's agent reached out to and had mutual interest from the Broncos and the Panthers. Now, obviously, the Broncos ended up going with Russell Wilson. The Panthers have now gone with Bryce Young, so neither of those teams would be interested now. But there was at least some level of interest if and when the Cardinals decided to move on from Kyler Murray at the time. But again, someone would be interested. I just don't know the value, and I don't even know. We don't even know the quarterback that they're getting at this point. Hell, like Trey Lance was worth a first round pick a year ago. Who knows what Kyler will be worth above or below his current value later? So that one's interesting in terms of the draft picks that they have they might even get more because Caleb Williams is going to be the number one pick in this year's draft whether it's by the team that gets the number one pick or the team that trades down so someone else can get him he's going to be the top pick in the draft I would be curious to see what happens and where the draft falls before figuring out the Kyler Murray trade value or even the number one pick trade value if the Cardinals get it from either the Texans or themselves that part will be interesting and the other part you mentioned in terms of Jonathan Gannon, the head coach, one, he's not the play caller on the team this year. It's uh, it's their defensive coordinator. I believe his name is Nick Rayless. He was like the linebackers coach for the Eagles the, the year prior. So Gannon's not even going to call the plays for the Cardinals this year. Remember, two coaches actively chose to take defensive coordinator jobs over the Cardinals head coaching job. Dan Quinn turned down the job to be the Cowboys defensive coordinator, and Brian Flores turned down the job to be the defensive coordinator of the Vikings, which tells you just how much people view that job as being set up to fail in Arizona right now. Gannon's not going to make it. Whether he gets fired at the end of this year or the year after, he's he's not going to make it. Kyle, you said it all. I think regardless of who gets thrown into that uh, trash heap of a franchise is going to fail coach player anyone. So that that's all I got. <laughs> hey guys, we want to give a big shout out to Zach Burl for joining us on this episode. Zach's one of the outstanding hosts of the Boda sports podcast. Those guys do a great job of covering the NFL and fantasy football. Give them a listen and find links to their stuff in our YouTube description below. Remember to like comment and subscribe on our stuff as well from Juju. Stay safe, happy and healthy. And we'll see you on the next one.